Have you ever wondered how Simula achieves its dark and sinister sound? Well, look no further, because I've got the perfect tutorial for you. Welcome back to another episode of How to DMB with Inverse Audio. My name is 5X, and we've got an absolute banger for you today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Can we hit a like goal of 200 likes for today's video? You guys have been killing it recently. All support is massively appreciated. Leave a comment on what you want to see next on this channel. And without any further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. Simula's drum programming is a study in the power of simplicity. While his beats may not have many layers, they carry immense energy. Start off with a kick that's both punchy and clean. Look for a sample that has a sharp and deep resonant thud. Layer this with a snare or clap that cuts through the mix, providing the essential snappiness to your rhythm. To give your drums character, incorporate some quarter note hi-hats. These should provide a steady groove and maintain the tempo. Simula often infuses his drum patterns with classic drum breaks, reminiscent of the jungle era. These breaks break up the monotony and add an organic feel to the track. Keep them subtle, using them sparingly to enhance specific moments. Remember that the key is finding the right balance between simplicity and groove. Just a quick one before we move on to the drums, our brand new Rampage Serum preset pack has just dropped with 139 unique presets. There's something for everyone to enjoy. Featuring all of the previous presets such as the Sota, Amplify and Boo videos. It spans across all subgenres of drum and bass, from Belgian jump up to ethereal dance floor. Use code 10 off for a 10% discount for the first week only. Right, now to get started with the drums. I've gone for a short snappy kick. As you may notice, the pattern's a bit different to regular drum and bass. It would usually look of something like this. But in this case, I've gone for a more minimal approach, as well as shifting this last one over by a beat, which gives it a skippy effect. Pair that on top of a short snappy clap. I'll break it down for you now. This is the main body. We've got two high-end layers. So those together sound like... Now for the hi-hats, I've kept it very simple. Eighth note hi-hats. Along with a quarter note. And together you've got yourself a very minimal, yet rhythmic and punchy drum and bass loop. Remember, you're not trying to overdo it, so keeping things simple is key. Now at the end of every 16 bar phrase, I've made an automation on the drum bus that consists of a reverb and a low cut, which sounds something like this. Just keeps it interesting for the listener. Simula's signature sound design sets him apart in the drum and bass world. His bass lines are unique, characterized by the depth and grip. Begin with wavetables. Wavetable synthesis allows you to craft intricate, evolving bass textures. Experiment with different positions and octaves. Modulate them and use filter sweeps to give you bass movement and character. Simula isn't afraid to venture into unconventional territory. Try experimenting with strange LFO shapes to create unpredictable bass movements. Incorporate FM synthesis for a richer, more complex sound and don't forget the magic of formant filters. These can add eerie, vocal-like quality to your bass lines. While your sound design skills may not reach similar levels yet, don't be discouraged. Use his techniques as a foundation to create your unique style and sound. Now jumping into the bass lines, the essential thing to do first is to take a look at the sub. This follows the same root note throughout the whole song. And if we take a look at this patch, which is included, all the presets in this video are included in the new Rampage preset pack that we've just dropped on a website. Now to break this one down, it's just a sine wave with this LFO that's set to trigger the uh, chorus pitch, which is making it go down fast, which is what's giving it the kicking effect. And then this nice long envelope here, which gives it that length. On the effects, we've just got a soft clip distortion just to make the sound a bit warmer. Right, moving on onto the first bass is this evil skeleton laugh bass. Crazy sound. Now for this one, it's not actually as difficult as it sounds. It's using this LFO one in this shape to control the levels of both, both oscillators and the resonance. And then LFO two is controlling the movement of the sound, sending it to the things like the detune and the sync. 
on the effects, we've got hyper, we've got a distortion, flanger, got a chorus, a compressor, no multiband though, um, reverb, and then another filter, the formant filter, which is what is giving that like talking effect. I've got a few macros set up here, like the Tombra, the formant, and these are all automated in the track. Moving on, the next bass is this wobble. Now this one's all controlled by LFO1. We've mapped it to the levels of both oscillators and to the wavetable position, as well as the cutoff, which is using a band frequency with quite high resonance. Uh, both octaves are down two, and we're using the Sweep 20 and FFT add seconds wavetables. Now for the effects, we've got a hyper, distortion, multiband compressor, and an EQ. These some of these parameters are mapped to the LFO one just once again to follow that shape. Quite an easy sound. Next, we've probably got one of the craziest basses in this. Now, if you couldn't tell, I took big inspiration from Bonesaw. Uh, absolutely amazing track. If you haven't heard it, make sure you go check it out. This one, it took a lot of experimentation to get right, but we've got it sounding like this. Now, you might, might be wondering how on earth did I make this? And to be honest with you, I couldn't tell you. I was just experimenting for ages and ages, but we've got this really weird LFO shape like I spoke about earlier. These weird LFO shapes are key to creating these weird sounds, and that's controlling the level and the wavetable position as well as the chorus pitch of oscillator A. Uh, then we've got it mapped to the cutoff and the resonance on this high 12 filter, so it's all being controlled by one oscillator. And then this LFO2 is mapped to the rate of LFO1, so it speeds up and down, which is what gives it that uncontrollable, unreliable effect, I guess. On the effects for this one, we've got a hyper as per usual, a multiband compression, a reverb, and an EQ just to filter out some of those lower frequencies. So the first phrase of basses sounds like this. Now to make it a bit more interesting, I've added this B section as well. So the second phrase of the basses sounds like this. Now we've got the same evil skeleton laugh going on there. Then I've gone for a wobble again. And then this next sound is this scary train horn. So this is uh, also in the preset pack. It's called Armageddon. Now this one's all controlled by LFO1 and uh, LFO2 is just controlling the pitch, which is what gives it that sliding down effect. And LFO3 just makes it evolve over time. So on the effects, we've got hyper distortion, a chorus, some reverb, EQ, and then this notch filter, which is once again being controlled by LFO1. That's what gives it that resonant shape. And for the LFO1, I've gone for a dotted pattern, which is not something that you see a lot. But like I said, you have to get creative with these sorts of bases. And then I've gone for a Reese, but I've tried to make it as interesting as I can. So to do this, I've used unusual wavetables which don't have a lot of high-end harmonics, which is why I've reintroduced them using this sub here. The, cell, the sound itself is pretty easy. You've just got an LFO1 controlling a cutoff a tiny bit just to make it a bit more interesting, and then just a simple tube distortion on the post-processing. Now, what makes this sound a lot more interesting is this crushed ringing effect that I've piled on top of it just to give it some texture, and that sounds like this. It's just a really high sawtooth wave that's been downsampled by this distortion. It's got a bit of reverb uh, and EQ to cut out the lows. So if you put them two together, it creates much more of an interesting dynamic between the two. So yeah, with the basses, some basic side chaining and the drums, the drop sounds like this. <laughs> Now, of course, you couldn't have this playing for the whole 64 bars of drop that I have here, so I have added some variations in it. One of the ways I was able to do that was by changing, for example, this UFO uh, Reese pattern. And then if we take a look at this bass, uh, another one that I added, pretty similar to that Scary Train bass. Once again, all being controlled by LFO1, it's just a really fast eighth note womp. And on the effects, we've got hyper, distortion, my band compression and reverb. Pretty standard for this one, but it's just being opened up by that filter. And we've got the classic minus two octaves and then this one plus seven semitones. I do actually have a macro max. 
so I can control the octave at which it's at to give it more variation once again. And then on top of that, I have this uh, Evil Skeleton laugh rate, which is essentially just controlling how fast this laugh goes. <laughs> which can give it more of an interesting dynamic as I play as I play it throughout the drop. Just so it doesn't get too stale. But yeah, it's just a combination of those seven bases plus the sub. And now the sub's staying on this C sharp at all times. And it's just a variation through rates and octaves and things like that. A little bit in the arrangement as well. And then if we skip ahead to the second drop, I've added a different bass here, the skeleton this Foreman uh, bass, sorry, I'll let you listen to it. <laughs> Now, yeah, that bass is crazy. But once again, you know, I'm not too entirely sure how I came up with this in the end. It was just a lot of trial and error. LFO1, as you can see, is controlling the uh, most of the sound. We've got the level of A. Now, we don't have anything coming through B. I'm only using it for an FM synthesis. But most of the sound is being shaped by this formant filter. I've uh, set, set the cutoff to be automated by this one as well, as well as the formant itself. And we've got a bit of hyper distortion that actually goes down as this comes up. We've got a phaser, a chorus, a multiband compressor, and some reverb. And once again, I've got the rate controlled here. I'm not sure if I actually automated it in the song. But yeah, that's another patch that's in the pack for you guys. But yeah, that pretty much sums up the bass. I know that Simulus basses are really complicated, but try your best. And honestly, experimentation is key here. Simulus music transports listeners into a dark, haunting world. A significant part of this ambience comes from his impeccable use of reverb and delays. To capture Simulus essence, you'll need to dive into your sound libraries and get creative. Imagine yourself in a desolate graveyard late at night. What sounds do you hear? Cohen crawls? distant church bells, the eerie rustling of trees, and the spine-chilling cries of malevolent creatures. All these elements contribute to Simula's signature atmosphere. Experiment with reverb and delay settings to create the right spatial depth in your mix. Play with decay times, pre-delay, and feedback to achieve that haunting, cavernous effect. Layer eerie field recordings and ambient textures to build an immersive sonic landscape. Now this is the part I probably most enjoyed about the track, is creating that sonic landscape in the song. Now to break it down, I first started off with this radio feedback atmosphere. And then on top of that, before the song even starts, I have this little click, which is just the radio turning on. I found most of these on Splice, which sort of sounds like he's turning the radio on, or whoever it is. And then you've got this radio feedback. So think about your sounds in context. What could they lead to? What happens before them? First atmosphere I've layered here is this ambient drone thing. Now this one's a preset from Pigments called Death Rush. Second one that I've layered here is yet another Pigments preset. It's called Troy Battleground. It's really haunting. It's really nice. Fits in with the vibe perfectly. Then I have this uh, graveyard effect that I found on Splice. It just sort of sounds like a ghost exhaling or something. Then on top of that, I've got uh, another atmosphere. This one is from Arcade. You essentially just want to use anything that might invoke any sort of fear or could be used in a horror film. Um, then in terms of effects and stuff, I've used this impact. I've used a riser. Very scary, very cool. And then I have this very sinister sound of these children laughing, which just adds to it quite a lot. <laughs> You just want to get as evil as you can with this. Um, so then on top of that, I layered some bass, which is just the same bass as I have uh, in, in the drop here, the UFO Reese. But the only difference here is I've changed the envelopes so that the attack is very long and the release is very long. Just so it's not as sudden and doesn't cut in and out constantly. So I've gone for a classic hi-hat before the drop here again. Very self-explanatory, one hi-hat every bar just to build tension. And I've layered this top loop 
which I found on Splice once again. I just typed in skeleton hi-hats or something weird like that. Pretty simple. It's just got a nice echo on it and it fills the space very nicely. And I've got this little hi-hat hit, which paired with these sort of sounds like hitting skeleton bones, I guess. Bit of reverb on that. So yeah, all of those together sound like... As you can hear, I've used every type of sound that I could. I've, you know, I've used the bass, I've used atmosphere, I've used foley and effects to really build that sonic landscape and really try and invoke that fear as much as you can anyway through music. Sounds like straight out of a horror film, if you ask me. So yeah, then I've literally just copied that for the breakdown here. I don't think I've changed anything apart from having this Reese uh, that hits every eight bars instead of just for the pre-drop here but yeah that is the atmosphere building tension is a crucial aspect of simula's dark and demonic drum and bass when using risers impacts and build-ups remember that restraint can be more effective than excess simplicity is often key to heightening anticipation get creative with your fx tools consider using phasers and flanges to add a surreal otherworldly touch automate parameters leading up to the drop to create a sense of impending doom. Stutter effects can also add a dynamic edge, intensifying the build-up. Think of tension building as storytelling. Each element you add should contribute to the overall narrative of your track. Simula's music is a journey into the darkness, and your build-up should lead your audience down a similar path, leaving them eager for the drop. Now, since most of my tension building is, is very slow, and I've explained it in the ambience section, I think the biggest thing I have here in terms of if we're talking of like a build-up, is, is these two bars right here before the drop. Now, it's not a traditional drop where, you know, you'd have your kick like this. Um, that's not something that Simula does all the time. And I think it's much more effective to sort of surprise the listener with, with a drop. So I'll play it real quick and then uh, break it down for you. <laughs> As you can hear, that transition is very short, it's very clean, but it works effectively. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So the first thing I've done to sort of break out of this uh, long stagnant section, it doesn't really have many melodics or not much changing in, in, the, in the intro, is this riser, which I've, I've used previously here. That announces that a new section's beginning. Um, so then the next thing I've gone for is two impacts. This is the first one. A nice low end rumble. And then this high end impact. If you pair those two together, gives it a nice full sound. Then I've also added these atmospheres. One of them has a stutter effect on it, which sort of serves as the build up itself. As you can hear, you know, it's swelling up into the drop. I've also added that crushed ringing effect, which I've layered on top of uh, the basses here. I just felt like it worked really well here. It's subtle, but it sounds like you're in a hospital or something. Um, and then I've added in this female sigh, which I sort of used throughout the drop to signify, you know, a change and to sprinkle it up a bit. It's a bunch of uh, reverb and delay on that. But then the main element of this is this female scream that I found on Splice. And yeah, it just sounds really terrifying. All those sections together give it a very nice and haunting effect. And then if we look at the second drop, I've done the exact same thing here, literally not changed anything, because if it works, it works. To create some more tension in the drops, this is the second drop, it goes throughout the first drop. I've, like I said previously with the drums, as they reverb out, I've added this little riser, uh, along with a sigh. And that just breaks it up very nice and, you know, lets the track breathe a bit. Before coming back in with the evil. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much a majority of the track. Um, I'll get over some mixing now. 
So there's nothing too crazy going on here. Um, when we're talking about the ambient sounds, for the most part, I do things like chuck a reverb on them. See, the mix uh, is quite high. It's on about 50% wetness. Um, and EQing vocals out just so they don't take up too much of the space. Using delays, uh, ping pong, very key. You know, it builds a lot of atmosphere. Same on these, same on this uh, children laughing effect. It just really adds to the ambience. So then if we uh, go over the atmospheres next, you know, this one's plain, doesn't have anything, actually all of them, because the sounds themselves are really good. They're nice and wet, they're reverbed out, and they sit, they sit very nicely in the mix because there's not too much low end going on and, and things like that. And this is the moment you guys have probably been waiting for, is what effects do I have on my basses? Well, let me show you. So first of all, I'm sending my sub and every single one of my basses to this bass bus, which has a KHS gain on it. I've set it to the percentage mode, so then I can automate the percentage mode and use that as a side chain for my kick. As you can see, I've, I've tried to match it to, and used ear as well uh, to the shape of the kick, just so that you can't actually hear the side chain, but you can feel it. Uh, on the sub, I just have a decapitator. If you guys know me, you know I love this plugin. I use it all the time. On this uh, skeleton laugh, I've got an OTT, a decapitator, and I've cut out the low end. This is one thing you'll see me doing a lot, is if I have a sub underneath, which is 99% of the time, I'll cut out anything below 80 hertz just to make room for it and so those frequencies don't clash. <laughs> On the scary train horn, I have, I have a reverb mix set to 16%. Most of the basses just have a bit of saturation on them. Uh, same with it. This one just has a limiter because those peaks were a bit of a nightmare. That was the four mint bass in the second drop. You can see those those peaks before were quite quite high. Uh, the skeleton bass, probably the iconic thing in the song. I did use a four mint uh, little altar boy on this because if you listen to it before, it just doesn't sound right. So yeah, pitching it down by 12 really helped it a lot. And I've got a decapitate here for a bit of saturation. And then once again, removing that low end so it doesn't clash. On the UFO Reese, I have a dark and intimate preset, very fitting for this. Um, on Isotope Trash 2, which is uh, another distortion. Uh, same on, yeah, that's the same one. And on the ringing effects, I have a delay. And on the one bass, decapitate a EQ just to balance it out a bit and reverb. And for the drums, I don't believe I have anything on them except for this one hat, which has reverb on it. They're all just being sent to the drum bus, which is then controlling the mix of this Valhalla room and the low end of the EQ whenever these sections come about. But yeah, that's it. The, the mixing is not as, uh, as complicated as it seems for this one. But yeah, that is essentially the whole track. If you're interested in one-to-one -one tuition, uh, make sure you go check out our website. All the information you need is on there. Join the Discord if you want feedback on your tracks. I personally give out feedback and a lot of our community members do. So yeah, make sure you join. It's a really great community and we talk about all sorts of things on there. Uh, leave a comment on what you want to see next on this channel. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I do apologize about the delay. I've been traveling and moving house and such. So regular uploads from now on. But yeah, I hope you guys... Have a lovely week. Inverse Audio, out.